All right, well, hey everybody. Today we're going to talk about uh, two-dimensional motion, not just one-dimensional motion where you're accelerating in a straight line or maybe falling down to the ground in a straight line, but actually two-dimensional motion. So projectile motion is, is a, a good example of that. So the first thing is uh, the interactive video vignette on projectile motion, which you can click here. I actually think this is important enough that I'm going to click through it uh, with you, um, but you can feel free to, to click it yourself at, at home. Um, so when you click that link, it'll bring you to this screen. You want to click uh, Try It is what you want to do. And it's going to ask you a name because at the end of it, it'll make a certificate. You do not have to give us, you do not need to give us a certificate. So it doesn't really matter what name you put there. Chris Orban, Brutus Buckeye, etc. cetera. Um, so this is uh, the... So this is the, the video here. I think I skipped through the first video. Um, but basically, they're, all they're doing is throwing a little tennis ball into a little basketball hoop thing. The question is, does the vertical speed of the ball change as it moves? Uh, the speed in this direction. Um, and so you can sort of make a guess there which one that it is. And uh, the other question is, does the horizontal speed of the ball change as it moves? The speed in this direction. Um, so you're, you're supposed to guess one of these two things. Um, I would guess no for both. I'm not saying that's the right answer. Um, and then you can go and you can kind of click on it, which again, this is similar to how our video analysis thing is going to do. So this is not an actual proper program, but you can sort of click on the ball and then it advances some frames. And what they're doing is they're putting a little vertical line here. And the thing that you're supposed to see is that these lines are equally spaced apart. Uh, again, when you are advancing the same number of frames, you know, the same amount of time, they have the time in the top right corner, which is really nice. So every time we do this, it advanced by 0.05 seconds. Whoops, I didn't cl click close enough to the tennis ball. Another 0.05 seconds, another 0.05 seconds, and then eventually you make this nice trajectory. Now, the fact that this trajectory is smooth is not as important as the, as the fact that these lines are all equally spaced apart. Um, and so what does that tell us about the vertical, the vertical and the horizontal speed? Well, because they're equally spaced apart, that tells us that the horizontal speed is not changing. You know, in the same amount of time, the ball is moving this distance in X, uh, and also the same distance in X, even as it's all the way over here. Uh, and so from this, we conclude that the horizontal speed is not changing. Maybe you already knew that. That's fine. Maybe you took physics in high school and went over this. That's great. Um, but it's, it's nice to sort of have it pointed out as clearly as this. Now, in this part, we're going to click the ball and it's going to give us uh, a line this way. And from this, one can see if I can click fast enough. Um, you know, are these lines equally spaced apart like they were, were the vertical lines or do they get, do they change? Well, you know, the difference between these lines are pretty big, right? The distance from this, this point to that, that point vertically. And then the distance between these points and that points vertically is almost nothing, right? And so the vertical, the vertical speed is changing. And you can see those changes by looking at this plot, which is nice. So that's kind of, that's the lesson that we learned from, from this activity. And that's really the main thing that, that I have here to point it out. Now, last lecture, we talked about how we basically derived this equation is that uh, the exposition for something that's being, that's accelerating the X direction, the exposition equals um, all of this. Make sure that this is the initial X velocity. Maybe this is zero, maybe it's not. Um, the same equation applies to the y direction for the same reason. Um, but sometimes one or both of these uh, accelerations are zero. So in the thing that we just watched, you know, typically the x direction is the horizontal direction, the y direction is the vertical. The thing we would just watch is any, are any of these things zero on what we just watched? So let's think about that for a second. Well, the initial velocities, um, you know, we're tossing the ball sort of at a 45 degree angle. So those initial velocities are not going to be zero. It's not gonna be zero. Um, the initial X and Y position, I, I could be zero. It depends on what the coordinate system is. 
Um, but you remember that uh, the speed, the horizontal speed was not changing. And so that suggests that the acceleration is, in the x direction is zero, but the vertical speed was changing, which suggests that the acceleration in the y direction was non-zero. So, so we can say that's zero. Um, I think that's all we can say right now. The next thing is a nice video from uh, the, uh, the Harvard uh, Physics Lecture Demo YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys know this, Harvard is a school in Boston. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. Anyway, they have these uh, two objects that drop at the same time. So let's take a look at that. So there you go. So they, they, uh, if you listen very carefully, the, both of those balls hit the ground at precisely the same moment. So exactly what's happening here, how did that actually work out to be? Um, so in terms of the force diagram for, I, I'm going to call this the bullet. So I'm imagining we're shooting a Nerf gun and then we're also just dropping a Nerf bullet. So we can draw something called a force diagram which is also called a free body diagram. There's two different names for the same thing. Um, sorry, I'm going out of focus here. The, there's a storm and it's the lighting in here is not as good as it was. Maybe if I stand back here, there we go. Um, so the only force on either one of these things is gravity. And so there's a weight that's pulling down, as you can see. Uh, and that's same for the bullet, the thing that's falling, and it's same for the thing that's moving off to the right. Um, so uh, so just looking at this force diagram and trying to figure out what these accelerations are, well, if the only force is vertical, well, then there's not going to be any uh, acceleration in the x-direction. So that's going to be zero. And then we're also, we're not tossing it off in a particular direction. And so the initial uh, x-velocity is going to be zero. Um, and then in terms of the y-direction, the acceleration in the y-direction has to be non-zero. Um, but the initial y velocity would also be zero because we're not, it's not like we're throwing it downwards or throwing it upwards. So that also is going to be zero. So we can solve this equation. So let's, this equation is not so interesting, right? The final in x position is equal to the x, initial x position. This equation is a little bit more interesting. So we can actually try to, to solve for how much time it should take for this thing to hit the ground, which is that. Um, so it's the difference in height divided by the acceleration. There's square root of two in there. Um, so there you go. So that's how much time it takes this thing to fall to the ground, the thing that we just sort of drop from that height. Whereas uh, for the thing that's launched, um, here again is the force diagram. And uh, again, there's only, there's just gravity pulling down on it. Um, so we've got these two equations. Now it's very tempting to assume that the acceleration in the x direction is non-zero in this case because we're launching it, right? Um, it's very tempting, um, but this force diagram, this is only if the, if the object has left the launcher, right? So, so you, you're right that when it's in the launcher, when it's being accelerated to the right, well then that's true, AX would be non-zero. You'd be absolutely right. Um, but because this force diagram is just considering like as it, right after it leaves the, uh, the launcher, um, that means that this, this AX is gonna be zero. 
but the initial x velocity vxi is going to be non-zero because we're shooting it off to the right. So that is definitely non-zero. Uh, and then uh, there's the weight pointing down, so we know a y is non-zero. So we can solve for how much time it takes this thing to fall to the ground. Uh, what's interesting about that is we don't need this equation at all to figure out how much time it takes for it to fall to the ground. We can just use this one. Um, and so we can solve for t here like that. We end up with the same equation. So you know, subtract y from both sides, multiply by 2, divide by a, then take square root. Exactly the same equation, and so it's exactly the same amount of time that it falls. So this is why those two things fall at the same rate. Now, um, a fun thing is that uh, objects that are, that are launched into the air, um, they, they follow a parabolic trajectory. So this is a nice example from uh, fireworks um, somewhere. I forget where this is, Sydney, I guess. Um, you can kind of see this nice uh, parabolas. Uh, these are upside down parabolas, I should say. I don't know if there's any welders in the class, people who know how to weld, um, but the little flakes that, that get ejected from the welding, those also do upside down parabolas. So there's, there's a nice video from the book that I'll play, and I want to make sure the sound is working right, so I'm going to mute my sound to make sure that you can see this okay. So here we go, mute. We throw a ball from one hand to another and track the ball's location over time with a series of position vectors drawn from an arbitrary origin. By finding successive differences between the position vectors, we can see the directions of the average velocity vectors during each time interval. Note that the vertical component of the velocity changes and the horizontal component of the velocity is constant. So there is a downward acceleration, but no acceleration in the horizontal direction. From the differences between velocity components, we can see the direction of the acceleration vectors. Acceleration vectors are all downward and of the same magnitude. Because the ball's acceleration is constant, its motion can be described with the constant acceleration equations of kinematics in two dimensions. These equations can be solved to reveal that the path of a ball in projectile motion is parabolic, regardless of the launch angle. So I, I, there's a number of reasons why I like this video. Um, and, and the thing that I, I think I like the most about it is that it's actually showing the acceleration vector on there uh, as the ball travels. And, and that's important because, you know, yes, it is true that once the ball is sort of floating through the air, the acceleration is down, the acceleration is constant, and that's a big part of this course. Um, but it's also true that when they're tossing the ball up, the acceleration is upwards. So whatever intuition you had to say, well, the acceleration must be upwards when you're tossing it, that's absolutely correct. It's just that that's not what we're analyzing. We're not analyzing, we're often not analyzing like, you know, this. you're tossing this thing in a particular direction. Um, usually we're just analyzing it while it's in the air. Um, and so the, the, there's a, in just a second there'll be a nice animation that, that, that shows you the, the, uh, the acceleration as they're tossing it, the acceleration's up. Uh, even as they're catching it, the acceleration, because it's slowing down the motion, the acceleration has to be up again. And actually the acceleration as you're catching it is actually more than the, the constant acceleration that, that the ball feels as it's flying through the air. And again, this is all caught, uh, this is all sort of computed in real time. And so this is not just us labeling this thing and asserting it to be true, it's actually from tracking that, the position of the ball. So again, this is the kind of fun stuff that we can potentially try to do with our video analysis programs later. Now, in terms of conventions um, and, and exactly why are these upside down parabolas? Well, in this course, I, I tend to define g to be positive 9.8, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and then I put a little minus sign out here, and it, it turns out this minus sign is what makes it into an upside down parabola. If there's a plus sign, it would be the, the familiar bowl shape, um, but, but because it's flipped this way, it, it's a minus sign. So again, I assume uh, that G is uh, plus 9.8 in equations like this. Technically, G is a vector, so if you watch the vectors video that came before this, G is a vector that is in the uh, y direction, but in its negative. 
And so as a vector, you would write it, um, the g is negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the y direction. Uh, but the reason I write it positive 9.8 is that I'm, I'm basically saying this is that g without the arrow on top is the magnitude of the uh, acceleration. And so if you square this and take the square root, you end up with a positive 9.8. Um, so anyway, that's just sort of how I tend to think of it. So technically, this equation up here is equivalent to this equation, um, except this could be potentially in an x, y, maybe even z direction. Um, but it's true because this is a vector and this is, this is not a vector. This is just the magnitude, and I put a minus sign in there to make sure it's going the right way. Um, so yeah, so I tend to assume g is nine, positive 9.8. Um, yep, OK. Now the, the group work for today is pretty fun. It's, uh, I don't know if you've played the game of Angry Birds. It's been around for a super long time now. But uh, in the game of Angry Birds, you're trying to uh, you know, launch a bird that's going to hit a particular part of the platform. And so you need to understand, you need to know exactly how quickly the bird should be moving uh, and exactly what angle. And so one of the questions on there is saying, what, what velocity is needed here to hit the very top of the pedestal? Because sometimes there's certain parts of this thing that you're trying to, to hit. Um, so what, uh, what velocity does that need to be, assuming it's a 45 degree angle? And then I think later in, in the worksheet, it, it asks you to, to sort of lift that assumption. Maybe it's some different angle, things like that. Or maybe, I think later in the worksheet, it says that the x component of velocity has to be more than such and such. And then so you have to rework it that way. So it's an interesting problem. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a little tricky, but I think it's, I think it's going to be good for, I think it's going to be good for, uh, for what you're doing. Um, I will say one piece of advice before you get started is that, you know, this is, if you think about the velocity vector, this is the speed, the launch speed, which is sometimes called the muzzle velocity. And then there's an X component of that speed and a Y component of that speed. Um, and because it's, and importantly, it's a right triangle, so that means that everything you know about trig is still true. So the initial velocity in the y direction is the speed times sine theta, basically. And then, you know, vxi would be um, the same thing, but a cosine theta. So I hope that that's helpful to you as you, as you work with your group uh, to solve this problem. Um, again, the second part of this is saying that the x component needs to be above a certain part. Anyway. Um, so that's the worksheet for today. Um, provide some good practice. Um, hope you enjoy that. Thanks.